Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night. Ever had your reflection blink back at you? That's a question I never thought I'd ask myself until I moved into this quaint old house, nestled at the end of a sleepy street shrouded by towering oaks. It was the kind of house that, despite its charm, seemed to hum with an eerie undertone. The kind of house that whispered secrets on the wind. As I unpacked my belongings, I couldn't shake off a feeling of unease. The air seemed to be thick with a silent anticipation, as though the house itself was watching, waiting. But I shrugged it off, attributing it to the stress of the move and the unfamiliar surroundings. In the midst of settling in, I noticed something peculiar. The mirrors in the house, antiquated and ornate, seemed to harbor strange movements. It was as if the reflections they cast were not merely mimicking reality, but were dancing to a rhythm of their own. One moment, my reflection was just as it should be. A tired man, surrounded by boxes, trying to make sense of his new surroundings. The next my mirror image seemed to move independently, its eyes darting to corners of the room I hadn't looked at. Its smile a little too wide, a little too knowing, it was unsettling to say the least. Then, the unthinkable happened. As I stared at my reflection, trying to make sense of what I was seeing, it blinked, not in sync with me, but of its own accord. A cold shiver ran down my spine and a sense of dread washed over me. I was living in a house with mirrors that didn't just reflect, but seemed to live. That night I slept with the lights on, hoping the morning would bring some normality, some sense of reality back into my life. I hoped that the strange happenings were mere figments of my overworked imagination, that come daylight I'd laugh it off as a silly trick of the mind, but as I would soon find out, I was wrong. The morning light did nothing to dispel the shadows of the night before. Instead, it only served to reveal more sinister secrets that the house was eager to share. It was the next day when the mirrors began to show me more than my own face. The first time I noticed it, I was brushing my teeth. In the mirror, a spectral figure was floating behind me. It had no distinct features, just an outline, a shadow. It was there. Then it was gone. Just like that. I blinked, thinking my eyes were playing tricks on me. But then, it happened again. This time, I was combing my hair. In the mirror, another figure emerged. This one was different. Not just a shadow, but a silhouette. It was a woman, I think. Her dress billowed as if caught in an unseen wind. Her hair, long and flowing, moved as though underwater. She too vanished, leaving me staring at my own bewildered reflection. The figures started appearing more frequently, each one different from the last. An old man hunched over a cane, a little girl with a ball, a tall man in a suit. They moved, they gestured, but they made no sound. It was like watching a silent movie in my mirror. The more I saw, the more a sense of dread started to fill me. I couldn't shake it off. These weren't just reflections, they were echoes of something else something not quite right. Their movements were disjointed, as if they were struggling against unseen forces. Their gestures were frantic, desperate even. It was as if they were trying to break free from the mirror. Each time I looked into a mirror, I saw them. They were there, in the periphery of my vision, always moving, always gesturing. I started to avoid mirrors, but I could still feel their presence, their silent pleas for help. And then, one day one of the figures stopped. It stopped moving and just looked at me. Its eyes, empty and hollow, bore into mine. It reached out, its hand touching the surface of the mirror from the inside. I could see them, but could they see me? It seemed like they were trying to tell me something. One night the figure in the mirror spoke, sending a shiver down my spine. This was no ordinary reflection, no mere mimicry of my own movements. It was something else, something alive, a shadowy figure, a formless entity. It moved independently, its movements a haunting dance of its own. There, in the dimly lit room, the figure in the mirror broke its silence. Its voice, as cold as a winter's night, was a whisper that seemed to be carried by the wind itself. It spoke in cryptic phrases, riddles wrapped in enigmas, each word echoing through the silence of the room. Beware the moon's absence, fear the sun's shadow, it warned. A prophecy, a foreboding message, or a dire warning I could not tell. I tried to understand, to decipher the meaning behind its chilling words. I scribbled down the phrases, turning them over in my mind, looking for hidden meanings, for clues, yet, the words remained as elusive as the figure in the mirror. The figure continued to speak, its voice growing stronger with each passing minute, 
It spoke of ghostly figures, of sinister intentions, of shadows that had taken a life of their own. Its words painted a terrifying picture, a nightmarish landscape that was as captivating as it was horrifying. The figure's words were a stark contrast to the silence that had once filled the room. The once comforting silence was replaced by a deafening quiet, punctuated only by the figure's whispers. The room was filled with an eerie energy, a palpable tension that seemed to hang in the air like a thick fog. And then, as abruptly as it had begun, the figure fell silent. Its form faded, leaving behind only my own reflection in the mirror. The room returned to its former state. The silence once again a comforting blanket, yet, the figure's words remained, their echoes a chilling reminder of what had transpired. The whispering shadows were silent once more but their words lingered, echoing in the darkness. The figure in the mirror had spoken, and its words had left a lasting imprint, a chilling memory that would forever haunt the corners of my mind. I couldn't ignore it any longer, it was time to dive into the house's history. So I plunged headfirst into the murky depths of the past, sifting through layers of dust and forgotten memories. The house, it seemed, had a dark tale to tell. Once a grand estate, it was home to a family plagued by tragedy. Fires, illnesses, and unexplainable accidents all seemed to center around one feature of the home, the mirrors. As I dug deeper, I discovered a chilling account of a seance gone wrong. The family, desperate to contact a lost loved one, had unwittingly opened a portal, trapping malevolent spirits within the mirrors. The victims of untimely demise, these spirits were bound to the mirrors, their spectral forms forever cast on the reflective surfaces. Yet, instead of lashing out, they appeared to be attempting communication. The shadows that had been moving independently weren't random. They were calculated, desperate attempts to reach out, to warn me. The realization sent a chill down my spine. I began to decipher the messages. The shadows were not the menace, they were the messengers. The true danger lay in the very walls of the house, in the malevolent energy that had seeped into its bones. The spirits were not the tormentors but the tormented echoes of a past filled with fear and pain. As I pieced together the tragic history and untangled the spectral warnings, I understood the gravity of my situation. The house wasn't just haunted, it was a prison for these lost souls, their anguish reverberating through every creak and groan. The shadows were not the enemy, they were victims like me ensnared in this web of darkness. I was living in a haunted house but it seemed the ghosts weren't the problem. There was a greater evil at play. The real terror lay not in the spectral figures reflected in the mirrors, but in the shadowy corners of the house itself in the unseen menace that lurked beneath the surface, waiting to strike. I had to confront it, the evil that lurked in my home. My heart pounded in my chest like a death drum, echoing the dread I felt. My skin prickled, every hair standing on end as I approached the mirror. The darkness within it was no longer just a reflection, it was a portal to something far more sinister. I could feel it watching me, its gaze colder than a winter's night. I could almost hear its voice, a chilling whisper that promised nothing but torment. The shadows had taken form, moving independently, revealing ghostly figures that were once human, their faces twisted with malicious delight, their eyes glowing with an unholy light. I knew I had to face it, to confront this malevolent entity that had invaded my sanctuary. But how do you fight a shadow? How do you banish something that has no form, no substance? I was a mortal man, pitted against a force that was beyond comprehension. The room grew colder, an icy chill that seeped into my bones. The darkness in the mirror swirled, forming a vortex of pure evil. I could feel it pulling at me, trying to drag me into its abyss. I fought against it, my fear giving way to a primal instinct to survive. I screamed, my voice echoing in the silence. I hurled every curse, every threat I could think of, hoping to drive it back. The shadows recoiled, their forms wavering. For a moment I thought I had won. The darkness in the mirror receded, the figures within it fading away. A wave of relief washed over me. I had faced my fear, stood up to the evil that had haunted my home. I had won. Or so I thought. I thought it was over, that I was safe. But as I looked into the mirror one last time, I realized I could not have been more wrong. The reflection staring back at me was not my own. It was something darker, something far more sinister. I had tried to banish the darkness, but instead I had become a part of it, 
Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night.